us now in on the conversation to talk more about the plans for the 50th anniversary and future plans for the school. It is the current principal, Mr. Roberto Lombardi. Roberto, pleasure to see you here today. Nice to see you. Sitting next to uh, basically the pioneer of SJB and the team. Um, yeah. Talk to us about this 50th year and the excitement that you're starting to see amongst your staff and students at, at your wonderful school. Well, this is, uh, we're, we're planning for a big event this coming April, and we have a number of staff that have stepped forward to um, collaborate with our past staff members <laughs> and, and all kinds of alumni that are coming out to, uh, to plan for this event and uh, um, getting together with them and meeting and, and deciding on what we're going to do to make the celebration for our 50th year anniversary. It's, it's, it is exciting, and I think things are just starting to kind of ramp up now because we're, we're making some decisions and uh, next uh, month in February we're looking to start making the, the ticket sales and get all the advertising out there to to put out the event so people know and, and of course that will be all online go to go go to a website absolutely it'll be on our, our website uh, we'll start putting it out there on social media uh, things are a little bit different from when uh, <laughs> Len was in, uh, in, in, in high school but we we have all kinds of ways to communicate now that are a little different and yes. so uh, all on social media it'll be out there and uh, I'm finding too like even before I came here today that uh, I was starting getting calls from uh, from other people from the school uh, that yeah. uh, past alumni that are just starting to hear about it and they want to kind of give uh, some input. And, and, and how, how cool is it? We, we, we're going to have the past, we have the present, and we could have some future leaders and teachers and principals that are going to be all together with us. I, I have to ask, between the two of you, was it easier to be a principal back then or is it easier to be a principal now, or is it harder? What, what, what would you say if you guys had to discuss this? Well, I think it was probably, in some ways it was easier for me, in some <laughs> ways it was harder. Yes. Depending on, I had to worry about the future of the school. I had to worry whether or not we would be able to offer senior classes, yeah. school fees, and so forth. Uh, Mr. Lombardi doesn't have to worry about that, but he's got 1,500 students That's it. with all sorts of different social issues to, to deal with. Media. <laughs> and social, social media. media. There's all <laughs> kinds of issues that we deal with now that weren't happening yeah. there, but then at the same time, now we don't have the worries of, of next year, are, are we going to yeah. be a school here with full complement of courses and that, because and, yeah. that, that's pretty much a guarantee there. And so yeah. th I think the problems are just a little different, but I think th there's always stress related to the job and what you need to do to keep the school functioning. And, and I, I had to deal with maybe 10, 15 staff, 20, 25 staff max yeah. at the time. Well, what are you up to now? We're, we're looking at about 150, including all the custodial staff and uh, oh, uh, clerical and, and yeah. teaching staff, a, EAs. A totally different operation. And of course, yeah. how many VPs do you have now? We Mr. have three VPs. You have three VPs. How many did I'm you have back? You had that's one. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's the thing. Lu you're lucky to have one. Because with the numbers you had, <laughs> it would have been difficult to get uh, the yeah. staff. Yeah. yeah. Well, when, when you have these opportunities, Mr. Lombardi, to, to, to sit with some of the past, and, and you'll be seeing other teachers and, and, and principals from the past as well, what do you take from those conversations listening to them? Well, it, you know what? It's... it's what Len was saying about the kind of the struggles that were going on back there, because it was like everyone had to be all in at that time because mm -hmm. the future of the school relied That's on right. it. And just to see how they all came together. And I, I see it a little differently with the school. Like, the staff comes together in the, uh, presently. Like when there's issues that happen, they're there. They're solid. They're like a family. And I'm sure when you have a, when you start out, the small staff that you had, you, you had to all be very close. Yeah. Like to. They were very close and very multi talented. They had to do a lot of things. You got to do it all. Maybe they didn't want to do, but they, they knew it was necessary. And they did it and did it well. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very thankful to them. Uh, and of course, you talk about the original 300. The original yeah. 300 students mm -hmm. compared to 1,500 now. Mm -hmm. Big difference between kids from yesteryear and today, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 I know our school right now is very culturally diverse. We're in the Central Mountain area, very diverse uh, students. And, and I've seen that change happen because I started there as a teacher in 1999. Mm -hmm. And then I went back as a VP in 2016, yeah, and then now I'm back as principal. Yeah. So in those changes, I've seen changes happen just in those years. Uh, I, I can't imagine how many, <laughs> how many <laughs> changes have happened in the decades prior to that. Well, we, we kept getting changed. First, we started at, at, with the temporary building, temporary wing of Blessed Sacrament. Then Lisgar, which we thought was going to be our, our, our permanent uh, home. Uh, and, and then, of course, we got too big for Lisgar. And then the full funding uh, came in in 1984. And then it was, it was uh, Larry Scrolls, the uh, late Larry Scrolls, a good friend of mine who was principal at the time. And he had to deal with a split campus. 
yeah. the moving of, of the Livescar building to the old South Mount building, the renovations, uh, the program changes. Uh, yeah. uh, but but you have to mention, I have to mention that the great program change at the time, and I was superintendent of Brabuff at the time, was the communications technology okay. program that was that was initiated. It became the top, uh, the top uh, mm -hmm. uh, program. Albert Baroni was one behind it and it became one of the top communications programs in, in the province. It won several awards, I think, at the time. Yeah. So uh, to see the, 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 the programs change and, and meet the times, I think that's been yeah. uh, probably the secret of the success of the school. It was always, it's always anticipated what was going to be needed and was ready to offer that program. Right. right. Yeah. Wow, that, that's amazing because I was just thinking about how right now we're doing what we call P-TECH program. We're affiliated with Mohawk College. Mohawk College. And so it's and it's all with the technology. Yes. And yes. so how that's almost like reminiscent of what you were just saying about yeah. how it, we it's like we're redoing again. We're now actually yeah. advancing yeah. And, and building with the community. Hey, everything old is new again. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and some of the same thoughts and mindsets are still the same. It just it's in a different type of atmosphere that sure. we're living a in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And even when you said about the renovations, because there would have been renovations at that time. time. And in the last, when I was there as a VP during the uh, the last uh, half of. Yeah. Uh, the decade that just passed, <laughs> I was there for yeah. all the renovations. We had a new uh, uh, main office building put out right yes. in front, and then uh, the library as well. The library was put there, and then there's also a renovation of the whole building, all the new HVAC and uh, all yeah. the windows. Uh, yes, so yes. It, lo it, looked, it looks like almost like brand new school now. And, and of, I, of course, I'm sure back then you had to start off slow, but eventually you got a football team and a basketball team. Team sports were somewhat. Well, we had we we promised the kids we would have a football team the very first year. And did you? And we did, and we did fairly, fairly well. And, and I've had young kids come, well, they're not young anymore, come back to me and say, you know, we're lucky we went to Rebuff. We got to play football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were only 150 boys <laughs> right. from the 300. 35 of them made the football team. Right, yeah. <laughs> Nobody got yeah. shot. And, and, wow. and, and now you have teams, uh, Mr. Lombardi, where, you know, you got all the kids trying it. You got turf fields. You got tracks. You got a lot of luxuries now well, compared to We do in comparison. Yeah. I know yes, we, we, we are yeah. very lucky. I think, I think all our schools have that. Like we have the turf fields that, yeah. that yeah. everyone's using, the community's using. It's that they're rentable. And uh, I think that... That yeah. the teams just love having the Absolutely. facilities. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You you gave some wonderful advice uh, in in the last interview to to the students out there, um, Mr. Lombardi. To you, ad advice or suggestions or thoughts that you can maybe give to our viewers before we wrap up here um, about schooling nowadays and, and, and what needs to be done to to make that four year so exciting. Mm. I think uh, one of the big things I always say to the students is that you need to get out there. You need to participate. You need to yeah, join clubs, join the sports, um, as well as your academics. I mean, they go hand in hand. Uh, if, if, if you just study on, the, just focus on the studying and that's it, mm. you're not going to get the full, well-rounded feel of being in a high school. And I think that's important because that uh, brings out a full-rounded citizen out of, well, that's what we want. We want to, we want to educate yep. and build up new citizens, citizens of our city and to go out there and be able to function. And you got to do it all. You yeah. got to be involved in, in all of it, and it's it's being open to the possibilities. Again, the date one more time, please. So it's April nineteenth. Yep. Uh, that's uh, we're having our cel celebratory mass at five o'clock at St. Catherine of Siena, and then following that at seven o'clock at the school, so that everyone can enjoy the facility and there's new renovations, and we're, we're going to have bands and. Uh, um, all kinds of things happening there so people can socialize and enjoy each other's company. No doubt some archive rooms going through Absolutely. yearbooks, a lot of yeah. reminiscing. Yeah. Uh, well, for I, all I of believe all, all of the uh, past principals will, will, will be there. Those, yes. are, those that are still alive with us, yeah. Uh, yeah. With us, uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be there. And, yeah. I, and I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of those kids, the original 300. Eventually there were about 800 by the time I left, 800 to 900. Yeah, and and I, I'm looking forward to seeing. You some could of probably them. name all 300 names. We don't have time for that right yeah, yeah. now. <laughs> uh, to both of you, you know what? This has been so enjoyable. To the past, thank you for all that you have been able to do and 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 help cultivate the, to those nowadays. And of course, you're standing on those shoulders and continuing on with that great succession. So to both of you, thank you so much for being in the teaching industry. Good luck on your 50th. We're going to be thank going you. to a short break. We'll be back after thank this. You.